so it's very very important you'll see any of the good companies in cannabis are preaching about education 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 the only way we're going to change the laws the rules and the stigma is by educating people um, and so that's one thing I just really want to emphasize is know your dose know your tolerance you can always take more you can never take less and so just take it slow enjoy cannabis don't force it don't feel like you have to keep up with everybody because everybody's tolerances are different um, and so I started getting like I said I was getting more involved in events um, I eventually became like the education or brand uh, support for all of our dispensaries um, I would travel probably for like six months or six to eight months I was spending maybe two days at home or three days at home I would be going from San Diego to LA to Palm Springs uh, constantly and then um, once every other month I even had to do a trip up to Northern California so the first trip me and Anthony go to um, Cal Northern Cal we go to uh, Sacramento San Francisco Oakland Berkeley uh, San Jose and we hit pretty much seven or eight cities in over 1200 miles in four days just going around with all these um, to these manufacturers going around with our sales reps making sure they understand the product making sure going to these dispensaries trying to be just resupport them and so um, and yeah and so just got a lot of experience a lot of education got to travel a lot also if you didn't listen to episode two we actually created the name for this podcast on that uh, first trip um, we were Anthony took the first shift and we went overnight uh, and then he kept passing Denny's and wasn't interested in Denny's and finally sees an IHOP so he pulls off and we take the exit and then we're going down the road and it, we miss the first turn so it says make a u-turn at stoner drive and so me and out me and him go and take a picture with the sign saying stoner drive and i was like that is literally a sign saying we are doing what we are supposed to do and i told him i said if i ever start a podcast i am naming it stoner drive and so anybody that thinks we're riding around smoking we're not it's named because of that street sign also i will eventually have this um as a video podcast and so i will be shooting going around to different dispensaries and uh, cannabis events across california and hopefully eventually the u.s um with the mystery machine i'm trying to currently sell my car to get a van and then remodel as a mystery machine so I can go around and interview people right there out of the podcast or out of the van. So uh, it'll be sort of double entendre for Stoner Drive. It'll be great. It'll be for the sign that gave me the sign to continue to do what I do, that I'm on the right path. And then it's also going to be for being in a van and doing a podcast, getting high in a van. So it works out. <laughs> um. But yeah, so I'm still with Therapy Tonics, um, and, but recently I started to want to bet on myself. I've always wanted to do podcasts, um, and I've always, wanted, I've always been good in front of people, but every time I bet on myself, I bet on my work ethic and my work skills, but I've never bet on myself as a brand or as... A person that I ever thought would be in front of a lot of people on camera anything like that I just like talking about cannabis <laughs> and so uh, I really support or I really want to thank all of you for supporting this show um, for buying in to what I'm trying to accomplish to show you that what you see on CNN ABC MSN Fox any of that crap they don't have anybody from the industry on there Every time they talk about cannabis, it's all these people that have probably don't even smoke or consume. And so that's why I wanted to start this podcast is to interview people in the industry and give you our point of view directly from people 
in the industry doing smoking the cannabis that are um, if it's labs if it's brands if it's dispensaries if it's now marketing I mean there's so many different avenues and venues in the cannabis industry um, so that's just a little bit about my story my experience um, and why uh, I can at least back up some of what I say uh, a few tips I would really give to anybody that's trying to get in the cannabis industry um, or even trying to make a big move the biggest things you can do is research there you can never get enough research or education you can always learn more so watch documentaries watch films stay up to tune stay up to date on the verbiage um, and everything we I just stay tuned to everything try to stay updated um, the more you know the better your chances are uh, there's a great podcast called uh, marijuana today daily and it's just 10 to 15 minutes about all the news of cannabis for the, that day um, and they do it five days a week so it's really good just quick 10 15 minutes and it lets you know which states legalized which bills are in the works um, and just little things like that um, the next thing I would recommend is definitely have enough money saved. Don't come out with two grand and move across country. Um, I did it probably with 2,600 and that was stupid. Um, I mean, I made it work out. I, I, I'm still here. I'm still being successful, but I put myself in such a hard predicament that I had to just grind and grind and didn't really get to enjoy California when I came out here. I was working a lot, like seven days a week between two to three jobs. And so I would just recommend so you can enjoy it more and experience more of where you're moving is just to come out with more money financially and just be ready. I would recommend at least four grand um, minimum just just to make sure that you're prepared and that way you don't have to put on the grind that I did um, and then the final thing I would recommend well two more uh, or a few more I guess <laughs> oh well you know I'm a stoner if something comes to my head I'm just gonna say it. but resumes make sure you tweak your resume I always thought about applications back on the East Coast um, at almost every place I come to even restaurants ask for a resume so look at your resume create it have other people look at it the more eyes the better um, in the less than three years since I moved out to Can uh, California I have tweaked or redone my resume eight times um, I even had a friend Julia who I would pay her or smoke her up and for her to tweak my resume and just help me with it and so i'd tell her sort of what i did in this job and then she would just rephrase it and reword it so it sounded a lot more professional and so if you know somebody that looks over resumes if it's a manager you trust or something like that have them look over your resume have them give as many tweaks and pointers as you can and there's nobody that there's not enough eyes that can look at that um, I really cannot stress that enough resumes 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 it is so important out here um, and it's something that I just did not even think of before coming out I just was used to applications and just never thought about it so make sure your resume is just really good make sure more people look at it and you can always tweak it um, and then the final thing I would say is experience when you move to a new spot you want to experience everything you're moving to you're not moving there just for the job you're moving there to be in the area so go out to bars go meet friends like meet people be open honest if somebody asks you out for a beer and you're tired but you don't really know anybody go out for that beer I don't care if you're exhausted trust me the relationships you build you can never have enough connections and especially if you are true and you're honest and you people they can see your passion like i have had so many people help me out just because they see what i'm trying to do 
and I wasn't used to that in Virginia. And in Virginia, there was just so many people that are like, hey, I support you, I love you, and then we never show up. Out here, people will show up for you. And I mean, I'm not saying it's just because California and Virginia is different. I'm just saying surround yourself around people that are going to be there, that are going to support you. And be there to support them. People will support you. If you're at their shows, they'll come to your shows. And so be honest, be truthful. Um, so that's my story. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, you can reach me at Shagwell and Bullock on Instagram um, or in comments if you want to talk about my weird childhood, my holistic healing, um, how a lot of people don't know about. I've never been vaccinated. It was all organic food. It was vitamins. It was, like I say, my mom was a hippie. And I use medicine, and that's why I also believe in cannabis. Um, to bring up my mom again, she was always about helping people. And so both me, my brother, and my sister have all done that. Um, my brother and my sister are currently, well, one's a nurse in the ER in uh, Wisconsin, and then the other one is she's going to school to be a nurse, and I, she wants to work with children in pediatric. And so all of us... Our mom was our biggest influence on us, and we try to do everything to make her proud, not just because she was our mom, but because of how incredible she was and what a role model she was. And so we all wanted to help people. And my brother and my sister have found a great way to help people, and mine's cannabis. Cannabis helped me through those times, and I want to help people with cannabis the way it's helped me. And I hope that if this can cure cancer, that I can maybe prevent someone from feeling the pain that we felt, um, from not having to deal with that loss, or at least be able to enjoy their time, last times, a little bit better than we did. And so I dedicated my life to this plant, and I will continue to dedicate my life to this plant because... I'm not religious, but if there is one thing that's a miracle, it is cannabis. And I will do everything I can to spread the benefits and just beauty of this. So, yeah, that's my background. Um, but as you guys always know, I would like to do the 420 code. If any of you haven't heard me talk about the 420 code, this is just a book that was put out. It's a better way to treat people through stories of a stoner. Um, the, this book was actually anonymously published uh, years ago and, and then kickstarted to continue making sure that it's online for free, but also kickstarted to create the books. So you can actually buy the books for $10 or you can get like five of them for 40. Um, and I really do recommend supporting it, but even if you do go online and read it, this is just a way to be a better person. Um, over the past episodes, we've talked about there's the four virtues and the 20 rules of thumb. The four virtues are openness, flow, honesty, freedom, and fun. From openness flows honesty, from honesty flows freedom, and then from these three, they flow fun. Now, the past three episodes I've talked about uh, each of these so we have talked about openness honesty and freedom now we'll talk about fun fun is the fourth and most important of the virtues you must not be too serious for all the worst things are done seriously if others do not accept the code you must not laugh or you must laugh not cry if another hurts you you must not let yourself down do not judge others no one else can fail the code. You can only fail it yourself. If people do not live by the code, do not rebuke them, but learn from their mistakes. For it is not judgment nor criticism nor preaching that others are brought to the code, but by fun. The stoner took another his joint and looked around the woods. They are beautiful speckled with green and yellows and browns, and the air was thick with mystery and wonder. And so he went on exploring the lookout for the 20 rules of thumb and so what this means is you must enjoy like cannabis is for enjoyment 
it's to enjoy nature around you. It's not for the smoking or the enjoying the high, but it's more, what does that high do? It allows you to see nature and see things in a whole new way that you would never seen before.